Hi everybody, welcome back to the Revelation Bible Study. My name is David Kenny, and I am the pastor at Walden Community Church here in Montgomery, Texas. This year in 2020, we decided to go through the entire book of Revelation, but not to worry. I know some people are a little scared and trepidatious about reading this and understanding it. We said we're gonna go through it slowly, right? Slowly in little bite-sized chunks, maybe five minutes here, eight minutes here, 10 minutes at a time. So you're more than welcome to start anywhere in the study that you like. Go back and find the first one. We're still only in Revelation chapter two. We're gonna pick up at verse 12 and you are more than welcome to follow along and read with us. Revelation 2.12 begins, to the angel of the church in Pergamum write, the words of him who has the sharp two-edged sword. That's a, a new greeting for us. The book of Revelation, um, how it begins, Jesus wants John to dictate a letter to seven different churches that are located in Turkey. And in Revelation chapter two, we have four of those letters. Letters to the church in Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, and Thyatira. In the letter that we saw in Smyrna, Jesus says that he is the first and last who died and came back to life. That's how he describes himself. When Jesus writes to Ephesus, Jesus says that he is the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand. But here to this church, Jesus says, I am the one who holds the sword. Now, I know for us, the sword is an image of weapons and violence, but let's kind of just examine what we already know of scripture. In Matthew 26, one of Jesus' own disciples draws a sword to defend himself when the soldiers come to arrest Jesus. And Jesus heals the one who was cut by the sword. And we don't ever see Jesus condone violence in his ministry. We don't ever see him say that retaliation or revenge is a good thing. Second, when we read the book of Hebrews, Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints, marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So for the Christian, the sharp two-edged sword is the word of God. So what does the word of God cut? The Bible says that the word of God is a sword that's powerful enough to penetrate, to cut, to get to the deception that's in my life. It sheds thoughts on uh, my intentions and my sin. It exposes those dark areas of my life. The Bible says that God's promises, his teachings are sharp enough. They are living enough, active enough to penetrate all the way down to the bottom of my heart. And it shows me the cancer, the darkness that's in my life. And it helps me carefully remove those things like a scalpel. So the word that Jesus holds is not for swinging. It's not, the church doesn't use it for stabbing. It's a delicate precision instrument that removes sin. Verse 13 says, I know where you dwell, where Satan's throne is. Wow, more, more imagery, right? And that's not really a good address. You know, if someone said, hey, where do you live? I said, oh yeah, I live over off of uh, Satan's throne. That's a bad name for a street. But it just says that Pergama is a difficult place to live. The community where they live and where they have their church is very anti Christian. And Revelation is really a letter that's written during a very anti-Christian time period. It's not really a good time to be a believer in Jesus, and it really won't be until uh, Constantine comes along and he makes uh, Christianity the official religion of Rome, but that's not for another 217 years. So from the time these churches in Turkey get these letters, they still have 217 more years worth of persecution and struggle, which means if there is any sort of false teaching or any sort of darkness or anything that creeps into the faith now, 
Jesus really does want the church to get in there and scalpel knife cut it away and remove it and get it out just like a tumor you know just like uh, uh, a cancer spot or your, the, the fact that your doctor might be worried about a cancer spot you know but better to remove it right better to be safe and remove it Jesus says I am the one with the sword and I step into your neighborhood and I see that your church is built right in the heart of darkness which means right at the center right Satan's throne would be in the inner court it would be ground zero right so this is not the outskirts this is not you know the far reaches Jesus says you guys are right in the middle of it you're in the thick of it and he says I get it I see you he says you hold fast to my name and you do not deny my faith even in the days of Antipas my faithful witness who was killed among you where Satan dwells so again we don't have to understand every word to understand that these are dangerous times people are living in fear they are living in hiding Jesus says you've held fast you've held strong you've been brave even when other Christians have been killed for their faith it didn't deter you you didn't leave so Jesus offers comfort he offers assurance and I think that's helpful for us I mean even right now when when you and I are walking through some sort of trial and we're wondering if God sees us or we feel alone God says hey I see you I know where you live I get it right I understand the pressures that are going on in your life right now you know the book of Hebrews says that we have a high priest that we worship Jesus who is a high priest and he understands the Bible says in Hebrews 4 15 that he sympathizes he sympathizes with our weakness now the word sympathizes that Jesus uses here is a Greek word sin and pathos and those two words together mean suffer with suffer with so Jesus suffers with us meaning we're not alone in this you know there there's no moments when God has his face turned from us he sees what we are going through and I know that you're just watching this on YouTube right now and I certainly don't know what you might be going through today but I do know this God sees you he knows what you're going through and you can rest assured that you're not alone I love you guys I'll see you guys next time bye